Okay, so hello everybody. I have uh, Eric Sahai with me today. He came all the way from London to uh, the CancerCon meeting here in uh, Chennai. And um, yeah, the first question obviously would be like how you so far enjoy this CancerCon meeting and how important you think is this venue for pushing the war on cancer a little bit forward and to meet clinicians as well as basic researchers? So the first thing to say is that I'm very much enjoying you know, being here and one of the things I found very stimulating and very positive about this meeting is that it goes all the way from basic science and the generation of new ideas about how to tackle cancer through to you know, discussions about you know, the problems of day-to-day -day management of patients, how you stratify them and you know, there's the grey areas as well where you know, there isn't the kind of clinical certainty that we would like and it's been very refreshing to see the, the whole spectrum covered. Yeah, and uh, you yourself also work on a big institute in London and um, your expertise lies in the metastasis and uh, ch how cancer invasion is uh, facilitated and in order for a tumour to metastasis it also needs to remodel its microenvironment to then colonize somewhere else. So how do you do this in kind of general features and what model systems you employ for this? So I think one thing that's becoming increasingly you know, realised over the last decade or two is that although cancer is driven by sort of somatic mutations within the cancer cells, we have to think of it in the context of its broader environment. So that means studying it with, you know, various leukocyte populations present, you know, thinking about blood vessels, and also we're very interested in the fibroblastic stroma. In terms of, you know, experimental approaches, one approach is obviously to work with mouse models where you have you know, all the other stromal cell types present, particularly if it's a syngenetic or a, a genetic mouse model. The other thing that we do quite a lot of, and I think is quite informative, is actually just to work with primary patient material. So there you get a, a tumor biopsy that you know, contains you know, the fibroblasts and the leukocytes within it, and then you can actually purify those populations and then reconstitute them back together as an experimental approach to understand how you, tumors basically exploit non-cancerous cells to promote their own metastasis. And uh, so you mentioned already it's quite important to have like the real tumor samples of a patient available as well as surrounding uh, healthy tissue most probably. So the IIT just recently uh, established or is going to establish a, a tumor tissue data bank and I guess it's been also all over the globe that this becomes the most important thing despite all the technology we have and all the bioinformatics structural tools available that the real thing we still need to have a hand on is really the availability and accessibility to tumor tissue in a way. Well, I think you're quite right, and the establishment of a tissue bank here will be a fantastic resource for you know many years to come. And it's, I think, very important that basic scientists, you know, continue to you know ground themselves in the reality of what you know real cancer tissue is like, and also talk to you know the clinicians who have to face up to the problem on a day-to-day -day basis. Because sometimes we can get very excited by a problem you know that we see in the lab, and actually we might be missing the point slightly or not understanding how that problem relates to the realities faced by um, people who have to, have to treat cancer patients. And do you think if, if we can somehow interfere with the metastasis, can we make cancer kind of a chronic disease with, that people can maybe even live with? So I think you're right in terms of there is, I think, a shift in thinking over the last few years that you know, the kind of targeted therapies that lead to, to cures are certainly at the moment proving quite elusive. What they're doing is expanding lifespan and we might need to start thinking about you know, cancer management in the long term so it becomes you know, a disease you know, like type 2 diabetes that can to a large extent be managed. Um, and certainly you know, when tumours have spread throughout the body, you know, surgery becomes much less of a, a likely curative option and therefore, you know, manipulation or kind of maintenance or stabilization of disease with um, chemotherapeutic agents becomes you know, the more realistic strategy, perhaps. Yeah. And uh, just the last question. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, 
You, I just learned that your father is from uh, also from India, and I was just curious uh, where or what part from India he is from, and um, whether you have any further insight of how things are running. Uh, I mean, cancer biology or how this is running in India. So uh, my father and his family are from Uttar Pradesh, so the the north of the country, uh, which is actually I think rather different from here. And this is actually my first time in the south and I'm very much enjoying it. It's also my first time professionally in India so I'm not sure I can you know, give you a, you know, a clear answer about you know, how things are changing or how things might be different but I've been very impressed with what I've seen here. And this might be like a good start for future ventures, right? Yes, certainly. Okay, thank you Eric Sahai and hope to see you next time. Yes, it's been